Nicole the Math Lady, and today we're talking about multiplying whole numbers and money. I think for most of you this will be a review, but there might be a tip or a trick or a shortcut in here that might be new for you. I hope so. Should we get started? All right, let's do this. Let's say I wanted to multiply two simple numbers together. Well, by now you might know me. The first thing I want to do is give you some definitions. So here we go. Nine and three are the numbers I'm multiplying together. In math, these have a special name. They are called factors. Nine and three are factors. Now, when we multiply nine and three together, we get 27. You know this because of your multiplication tables. And we also have a special name for this. We multiply two or more factors together. Our answer is called the product. The product. Okay, easy definitions. And one of the cool parts about multiplication is there's multiple ways to write multiplication. So you're probably familiar with this sign, right? Nine times three, that multiplication sign. But we also could use the dot. Nine times three, it's just the dot instead. Uh, now when we also use, in math, we'll use variables, they're called. When we don't have an actual number, but we're using a letter to represent it, we might say a, b, and we put them next to each other like that. We know that means multiply. And one more that we often use is parentheses. So if I did nine parentheses with three parentheses, that also means to multiply it. So we've got several ways that we can write multiplication. Now let's do a few multiplication problems and see what happens in the process of multiplying. Let me give you two numbers. Let's do 27 times uh, 42. Okay, well by now you probably know the first thing we do is we're going to do 27 times 2 and write that number down. 7 times 2 is 14, 2 times 2 is 4 plus that 1 is 5. So we get 54, but we're not done. We have to now do 27 times 4. Now some of you were taught that you should put a 0 here, others you don't have to. Zero is just the placeholder. But the important part of this is that when we do 27 times 4, we're going to start by lining up our answer right underneath the 4. So it's really up to you whether or not you choose to put the zero here. I don't, so I'm going to skip it. 7 times 4 is 28. See how I've lined it up? I carry that too. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So you see I have shifted over, and now I can go ahead and add these two numbers together. Here we go. 4, 8 and 5 is 13, and there we go. 1,134 is our product. Well, how does this work for money? Well, here's a problem, regular multiplication problem, but we do have some money involved. How does it work? Well, and the rule is go ahead and multiply like normal. So let's do that first. Okay, so again, we're going to do 53.23 times the 5 first. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 2 is 10. 1 is 11. 5 times 3 is 15. 1 is 16. And 5 times 5 is 25. And 1 is 26. Okay, I chose some big numbers. Now we have 53.23 times 1. And we know everything times 1 is just the same number itself. So I'm just going to rewrite that number. And now we add. Here we go. 5, 4, 8, 9, 7. Are we finished? No. So the rule is here is now where we account for our decimal and our dollar sign. We look to see how many decimal points do we have in our problem. Well, we have one, two, two spaces. So we got to take those two spaces, spaces and transfer them down to the bottom. Here we go. One, two. And now we can go ahead and add our dollar sign. So our answer is $798.45. And really, that's the only difference when it comes to money. You do your multiplication like normal, but then you account for your decimals at the end. But I want to show you a few other things about multiplication that honestly I didn't learn till recently, and I love this. Imagine you had a number to do like this. You wanted to do 200 times 53. And if we had to do 200 times 53, I'm actually going to erase it and show you two different ways. 
Let's do this. Do, 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 do. So there's the long way. I don't like doing things the long way. I like looking for shortcuts. But I'm going to show you the long way to do 200 times 53. We'd line up our 200. We multiply times 53. Here we go. 3 times 200. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, do it again. 200 times 5. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 2 is 10. And now we are ready to add. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, not too bad, but there's such a shorter way to do it. You want to learn it? Here we go. Whenever you have a number that has zeros in it, take the number that has the most zeros. So 200, you can see here, has the zeros. We're going to write our 53 on top. And we're going to write our 200, but we're going to shift those two zeros so they're hanging out over the edge because we're not going to deal with them. Oh, yes, here we go. So these two zeros, we're just going to bring them down. Don't worry, they're still going to be part of our answer. But we're only going to multiply the 53 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 2 is 10. And look, we have the same answer. But uh, did it in a lot fewer steps. <clears throat> you know me. I like looking for shortcuts. That's definitely in the colism I'm going to use. Now, I did not come up with this. I wish I had. But it's definitely something I use to make my life a little easier in math. Love it. So we have learned earlier about the commutative property. Commutative property means that you can take your two... Um, in the past, we used addition, so we could take our two add-ins, add them in any order, and still get the sum. Does that work for multiplication? Hmm, let's take a look. 8 times 7. We know 8 times 7 is 56. Nice. But what if we wanted to reverse the order of our two factors? 7 times 8. 7 times 8 is also 56. So this means that multiplication has a commutative property. There's a commutative property of multiplication. There we go. Commutative. We're going to say yes. Now, we also learned about the identity property. The identity property is when you do something to your first number and you get a, end up getting the same identical answer for your ending number. For example, in math, 5 plus 0, or in addition, 5 plus 0 is 5, so additive identity is 0 because we still get a 5. What about multiplication? Let's do 5 times what number gives us a 5, gives us the identical number we started with. Ah, that would be 1. So 5 times 1 is 5. 10 times 1 is 10. 27 times 1 is 27. So 1 in multiplication gives us that identical number we started with. Ah, so that's called the multiplicative. Mul Let's see if I can write this. This is a long word. Multiplicative. I hope I spelled that right. Identity. So yes, multiplication has an identity property from uh, of multiplication. Okay, there's one more. So we have something called the zero property. Oh, let me erase so we have some space. I'm going to put it down here. And the zero property only applies for multiplication. It means that when we multiply a number times zero, we always get zero. Doesn't matter what the number is. If I did 10 times zero, I get zero. 123 times 0, I still get 0. 1,592 times 0 is 0. So that means that multiplication has a 0 property. Any number times 0 is 0. And that is it. We are done with multiplication. Quick review. Not bad, right? Okay. I hope you understood all of that. If not, watch it again. It'll make sense, I promise. All right, it's Nicole. I will talk to you later. Hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye.